<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, truckers and drivers, who drive through dark roads, haunted forests, etc., what weird thing slash creature have you seen while driving? I was on a night-long road trip from Dallas, Texas, to Lafayette, Louisiana. I left Dallas around 6 to 7 p.m., got food on the road, and was alone for the drive. It got dark when I crossed over into Louisiana, and it was just me and the darkness and the trees and the music I brought along to listen to. Being from Dallas, I was used to street lights lighting my way, but driving through rural Louisiana, there weren't any. It was pretty chill at first, until I noticed a persistent light shining down on my dashboard. I got super freaked out by this. I slowed down, but it stayed with me. I sped up, and it stayed with me. I was starting to get paranoid, were they aliens? The men in black? Some super secret conspiracy? Some sort of unknown skybound angler fish that tried to trap travelers on dark country roads? I had no idea what was going on. Too scared to stop, I went as fast as I could and focused on that light shining onto my dashboard. There were no other cars on the road either, so I didn't really know what to make of it. Eventually, I figured out what it was. Somewhere in western Texas, during an around the country road trip, I was driving at night, by myself, on a road whose speed limit was really high, like 75. And 80 during the day, I think. It's the middle of the night, and no other cars are around. All of a sudden, I see hundreds of reflections of eyes. As it turns out, there are hundreds and hundreds of rabbits chilling all over the road and the sides of the road. I really, really love bunnies, so it was amazing to see. But then it really freaked me out because there were so many of them. It went on and on for a few miles. I had slowed down to maybe 35 to avoid hitting them. Then they just stopped. The road was back to normal. No more bunnies. Late night gravel roading with a friend basically, we were just cruising back roads in BFE when we came upon a severed cow head in the middle of the road. This was a long stretch of gravel miles away from anything. I was a bit freaked out and decided to reverse out, but my buddy was all like, duck that, I'll go move it. Well, he gets out of the car and picks it up, and that's when I noticed them. Around 20 or more white robed and hooded figures are starting to come out of the woods around the road. I screamed at him to get in the duck and car and tossed gravel, getting out of there. To this day, I have no clue what it was. The story in town was about devil worshippers or druids, but I don't think anyone really knew what it was. On January 12, 2006, the witness walked into his home to find a devil-like creature confronting his six-year-old Labrador dog. This creature seemed to be an unusual combination of a monkey, a dog, and the devil. Suddenly, it sprang to its hind legs and ran, nearly pushing us over to get to the open door I had just come through. This creature had long fangs, a monkey-like tail, and extremely bright, glowing eyes. In another report, an Ohio woman driving through Roanoke, Virginia, at about 2.30 a.m. reported a similar encounter in the late 1990s while driving on a dark road at night and forced to take a detour due to road construction. She had driven past a road sign that read Red Wolf Crossing close to Elizabeth City when a creature, which was not a wolf, leapt in front of her car. The creature was all black with very short, sleek fur, pointy ears, and a long, thin tail. She described it as cat-like, yet not like any cat she had ever seen. The snout was flatter than a dog's and more like a cat's. The creature was very tall, because she saw it when it was standing on its hind legs and was easily six feet tall. She indicated its torso looked very much like that of a very thin man, and its head resembled a large monkey but with a pointy beard. However, the creature's hind legs were like a wild cat or dog. It was very muscular and thin. Later, the woman checked with the U.S. Game and Wildlife Department, who told her there were no black wolves in the area but suggested she had seen a feral dog, feral meaning wild, or a wolf-dog hybrid. But the woman was emphatic, it was not a wolf or dog. The woman explained that the creature may have been on all fours just before leaping. The creature leapt with such force and height that it only took one bound to make it across both lanes of the highway. This indicates the creature leapt more than 18 feet, or 6 meters, to get across the road. Dogs and wolves do not leap this far in one jump. Even larger animals, such as deer, usually take several bounds to leap across a road. These descriptions are somewhat similar to the infamous Dover Demon that began on April 21, 1977, in Dover, Massachusetts. This happened around 1.40 a.m. before we entered the town of Bend. It was pitch black, and barely any vehicles were passing by. This thing went on the side of my boyfriend, who was driving. It was inhumanely fast, looked hairy like brown, and had long nails on its hands and feet. And long teeth, 
and my boyfriend said he didn't really see its face. I've never heard my boyfriend so scared in his life, and all I saw was a brown blur that went in front of our car. I was really scared when my boyfriend screamed, what the heck is that? So I covered myself with my big coat. At first, I thought it was some crackhead, maybe, but it's just impossible for someone to move from the side to the front of the car without dying. My boyfriend saw it since it was close to him, and he was really scared, but we still continued driving till we reached Salem. Our cat was also with us in the car, and he started fussing and meowing loudly. This experience really scared the crap out of us. Over the summer of 2020, my cousin, his friend, and I were driving back home from my cousin's girlfriends. I remember it so vividly. We were driving back at night, I think it was about midnight, and there was a man with a bike. I'm in a big city, so it's not anything out of the ordinary to see at least one person walking that late or biking or whatever. I remember seeing the man just standing there without a face. He had a white helmet, and he was white, and he was wearing a red cyclist outfit, but there was literally nothing on his face, he was facing the car. We were at a stoplight, and I was in the back seat closest to the sidewalk where the man was. We were at the stoplight for about a minute or so, and I was just telling my cousin and his friend to look because the man was just standing there doing nothing. He wasn't at a bus stop or anything, and he wasn't on his phone, so it was just out of the ordinary to see someone stand so still like that and not move. The man was also not using the crosswalk, he was just standing there and didn't turn his head or make any sort of movement. It is definitely the weirdest thing I have ever seen. I know what I saw, and my eyes are pretty good even in the dark, so I was creeped out. I've never seen anything like it again and wouldn't want to. I've had paranormal things happen to me, like seeing shadow people and whatnot, but nothing like this, and I also have never seen anything that wasn't at home or at another person's house. It was just creepy. It's made me question myself, but I swear to God I know what I saw. It kind of felt like a glitch in the matrix and has made me think and wonder a lot ever since I saw him. I work on oil rigs. I have since I was 20, and I am 33 now. In 2007, I was working for Nomac Drilling, they have since sold out to Patterson, and we were drilling in Haynesville for natural gas. Anyone who works on rigs knows that the work can take you way off the beaten path from what normal civilization is used to. In some places, you're on ranch roads for an hour before you reach the location, and in others, you're driving on roads canopied by trees in the backwoods of Louisiana. This happened to me in the latter. We were rigging down after finishing a well, and we were on our last night of the seven-day hitch. About halfway through our 12-hour tour, pronounced tower, we had pretty much finished and were making sure everything was tied down securely for the rig move. We killed the light plants, and the driller let us knock off early. This area was accessible outside Houghton, La, and the lease was actually on the back of the Barksdale AF base, but we had to leave the way we came in. Driving home at 2 in the morning seemed pretty normal at first, and I made it to the blacktop with no issues. The blacktop was still canopied by trees, and other than the lights from my truck, everything was pitch black. Out of nowhere, still basically in the middle of nowhere, this mother ducker appears almost close enough to get hit on my driver's side. Okay, weird, but even more strange, he was leaning at what I swear was an impossible angle for someone not to tip over, they were stretched, reaching out towards my truck, and what I could see of the face was morbid and twisted. The hairs on the back of my neck raised, and I gassed it to speed back closer to society. It was about a two-hour drive home, and I felt off the rest of the trip. More oddly, I was working over on a separate occasion with one of the crews that work when I'm home, and another hand was talking about a very similar, if not identical, experience. I don't know who or what I saw, and the face could have been a blur from relative distance, speed, and the time I actually saw them, but who is out that late and why? If someone broke down, I could see them trying to flag me down, but this didn't seem to be the case here. My friend is on an emergency trip to California and is driving through Nevada at this moment. She has been driving since yesterday afternoon, occasionally stopping to nap. I called her two hours ago and woke her up, she was so tired she had to rest somewhere between Clive and Wendover. When I called her, she was trying to tell me something very strange had happened but couldn't get it out. At the end of that call, she passed a doll that was either tied or impaled on a post next to the road. I just got off the phone with her a few minutes ago, and she told me that she had stopped to get some sleep. She laid down and was dozing off, listening to the cars drive by on the road, when everything went completely silent. She assumed it was a break in the traffic, but after napping for 10 minutes, she heard something moving outside of her car. She didn't see anyone, so she laid back down and then heard something kick sand up onto the passenger door of her car. She got up, decided to leave, and when she looked out her passenger side window, she saw something that was blacker than black. 
she couldn't describe it other than that it was blacker than black, and there was definitely something at the window of the passenger side door. This was right when I called her the first time. A few minutes later, she saw the doll on the side of the road. This story takes place in the late 1990s or early 2000s. My dad was in the Navy, and at the time of this story, he was on leave, visiting home. This incident took place in rural Pennsylvania, in the Allegheny National Forest. I don't know if this has any significance, but our town has a huge native history with a reservation just north of us. My dad was seeing an old friend from high school, and they were driving along one of the very empty roads surrounded by woods in that area. The road was dug into a giant and very steep hill, covered in huge, towering evergreen trees. As they were driving, suddenly a small black figure launched 40 feet from the upslant of the hillside and landed on the pavement right in front of the car. They hadn't stopped yet, and they were just about to hit the dead corpse. Until right when they're about to hit it, it springs up and jumps over the guard rail and down the hillside. Apparently, they both saw it but didn't know. So they both sat in silence, not wanting to look crazy. Until my dad's friend says, dude, was that a duck and monkey? My dad says, I don't know. I thought I was just seeing shit my dad said that all he saw was that it looked like a chimp, except its fur was much longer and rattier. It hung down from its arms, and it was matted and wet. He didn't get a glimpse of anything else. A few years later, when the internet came along, he found out about the skunk ape. He maintains to this day that he thinks it was a skunk ape. I've heard of many humanoid creatures and legends, but this one has me stumped. The last time I visited home, my 60-year-old stepfather shared this experience he supposedly had quite a while ago but had never shared before. Since then, I've thought about it quite a bit, and I get the most chilling feeling. I also want to mention that my stepdad is a very stoic, no-nonsense, extremely intelligent, and logical person. Hearing this from him shocked me. Here's his story. My parents live in Southern Maryland. One day around dusk, my stepdad was driving home from work along a highway that is lined by forests, not far from home. While driving, he saw two tall, pale, slender figures emerge from the forest. He said they looked at least eight feet tall and that their bodies appeared to be exoskeletons. As he drove by, he said that one of them looked at the car, and he felt as if it was looking at him right in the eye. When he looked in the rearview mirror, they were quickly retreating to the forest. What the hell did he see? Is there any lore to back this up? I was riding my motorcycle on a small mountain pass in western Switzerland. The night was pretty clear, thanks to the moon and the very snowy mountains that were reflecting the light. But there was no snow where I was, it was pretty higher than the road. I was driving pretty fast because of the cold air that was hurting my knees and fingers and the urge to be in my warm bed when, in a turn, just before a bridge, I saw what I think was a wounded man, kneeling on the side of the road, holding his stomach. Car crashes are common on this road, so I slowed up to see if everything was okay when the guy stood up really fast. I only saw him clearly when he crossed the road, thanks to my headlights, and it was damn creepy. It looked like a living, rotting corpse, and I only saw a glimpse of his face, it was like. The only thing that came to mind to define it was a plate of pasta and tomato sauce with meatballs. I saw it running through the field on all fours, then standing on two legs, looking at me for one or two seconds, then walking away calmly into the woods. I immediately took a small trail and crossed that wood, he just came in, but I didn't see him again. Even if we have a lot of strange creatures roaming our untouched mountains of forests, such as Dau, the Hutseran, the Taselworm, etc., I never heard about this kind of thing here. I don't know what I saw, but it was ducking scary to see. I'm 45. This was back in 1990. I'm driving my friend from Long Island out to Tuscan, Arizona. I'm coming through the mountains into Alamogordo, New Mexico. And this dog comes out, and I'm like, shit, I'm going to hit him. So I stopped the truck. I'm pulling a trailer. I'm driving a Toyota pickup with a U-Haul trailer. And I said, all right, and he came up to the driver's side door. Now I know I had plenty of rest because I'm sleeping during the day and he's driving during the day. I drive all night. I wake my buddy up. Darren, wake up. Look at this. The dog got up, and he had short front legs, like a dingo. The eyes were glowing. Dingoes are indigenous to Australia. They're not in the southwest, out in the desert. Anyway, he comes up. I rolled my window down a little bit, and I said, no, something's not right. So I locked the door. I pushed the button down with my elbow because I'm left-handed. I hit the door, and I reach over with my right hand and roll the window up. He scratched on the window, and then he was literally trying to open the door. He stood up. He stood up on his hind legs and back hind legs, 
and he was literally trying to lift the door handle like he knew what he was doing. And I said, Darren, wake up. And he looked over, and he said, what the hell is that? I put it in first gear, it was a manual truck. I put it in first, and I started. We were on a hill going up. I'm like, I don't know what the hell that was, but that was crazy. He reached and tried to open the door on the truck. If I hadn't locked it in time, he probably would have opened the door. I'll never forget it. I was about 20 or 21. I'm 45 now. Craziest thing. 1994, Navajo Summit, Arizona. It was a cold evening, and I had my two nieces with me, one was six, the other eight. I had gone to our family cabin, waiting for my sister to return from town. The evening started at about 7 p.m., we didn't have a key to the house. We waited for a couple hours, and the girls eventually fell asleep in my truck. As the night grew later, the temperature also dropped. I fell asleep as well. I woke around 9.30 p.m., it was very cold in the truck. I started the vehicle. As I depressed the brake pedal to start the truck, I noticed in the side mirror a face looking at me from the glow in the taillight. I hesitated to look at first, but I gathered enough courage to look. I saw a white face with long gray or white hair and black eyes looking at me. I freaked. Once I started the truck, I sped off and headed to the highway, not sure if what I saw was following us. It was. I felt as if it jumped into the bed of my truck. I turned west to head towards a town called Ganado. I went as fast as I could to my parents' house. Upon reaching the turnoff, I noticed it jump out of the truck and run along the right-of-way fence. As I pulled up to the house, I quickly carried my nieces inside. Once inside, I situated the girls for bed. Later that night, I dreamed I walked about two miles to my aunt's house. No one was home. As I walked back home, I noticed this thing paralleling me. I quickly ran home, went inside, locked the door behind me, and went to bed. As I woke the next morning, I noticed sand and dirt at the foot of my bed. I told my parents what had happened and what I had dreamed. They took me to a medicine man, and he told me that I actually sleepwalked to my aunt's house, and when I entered the house, it followed me in. It totally freaked me out. As many who grew up in largely rural communities know, it is common on the weekends for teenagers to go off into fields and drink cheap beer. I was 17 at the time, and I had waited for my friend to get off work so we could ride out to the party together. He picked me up at around 7 p.m., and it was fall, so it was dark out. We headed down a road with thick cottonwoods on both sides of it. The road was probably a quarter mile from the river. Hence, it is generally referred to as the river road since it twists and turns a lot along the river. So we had driven for about five minutes down the road when we noticed a large truck, possibly a suburban or a truck with a camper on the bed, was stopped in the middle of the oncoming lane. The driver's side door was left open, and the dome light was on inside. Nobody was around. We slowed down, thinking that maybe the guy had a flat or was going to come walking around the back. As we got closer, we saw a medium-sized, hairy creature, probably four feet tall. It had wiry, dark black to grayish brown colored skin. It was standing on two legs, looking down at its hands. As we slowed down, it looked up right at us with red eyes, opened its mouth, and let out a screeching noise. The mouth was very narrow, like a small dog, and it had long fangs on both the top and bottom jaws. My friend gunned the engine, and we took off. Freaking out and yelling, what the duck was that? Throughout the years, I've tried to look for possible explanations. A large mangy raccoon that was standing on two legs is the closest natural explanation I could think of. But there are still things that bug me about the incident. Namely, what the hell happened to the guy driving the truck? Also, I've seen bright yellow eyes glow on deer, but red? I've never seen anything similar. Nobody believed us that night, and nobody still does. My friend and I had just moved to Portland, Oregon, after college. One day he asked me if he could borrow my magnum to take on a deer archery hunt he was planning the next weekend. He didn't think he would need to use it, but he was concerned about the large bear population where he would be hunting. I loaned it to him. He arrived at the hunting site deep in the woods at the end of a logging road around twilight. Wanting to start hunting first thing the next morning, he rode his mountain bike in the dark to where he had hung his stand to spread some scent and make sure his shooting lanes were still open, etc. As he was crouched down, dribbling dough and heat urine on a bush, he felt the presence of something behind him. He stood and turned, reaching for the only light he had brought with him, one of those little key ring LED lights that turn on when you squeeze them. He squeezed the light on and saw a pretty large set of eyes about three feet off the ground reflect back at him. The LED light was too weak to show anything else but the reflection of those eyes. Thinking it was normal that a bear or deer would mistake him for an animal, after all he was crouched down and smelled like deer urine, 
he stood up straight, clapped his hands, and said, get out of here. In a firm voice, expecting that the confused animal would bolt away when it realized he was human. His actions did not bring the expected result. Instead of turning and running away, the eye slowly rose to over nine feet tall and took a step towards him. He felt an overwhelming sense of dread and quickly pulled the 357 out of the holster. Holding the revolver in one hand and the squeeze LED light in the other, he backed away from the eyes. Every step he took backwards, the eyes matched by advancing towards him but always staying just out of the ring of light emitted by the keyring. In a short time, he was backed up against a large tree, which he used to protect his back while he watched the eyes observe him from 10 feet away. The eyes would weave back and forth like a large animal, adjusting his weight from side to side, they would rise and lower slightly, like something was studying him from different angles. Even though he could never actually see the animal, he had a sense of something huge. The way it moved, the sound of the leaves and dander under its feet as it walked, the impressive amounts of air that were inhaled and exhaled as it breathed, and most of all, the height of the eyes as they towered over him all indicated a creature of massive proportions. After an eternity, he lost sight of the eyes, but he could hear the animal circling his position. More than an hour had passed since the last noise or sighting of the eyes, and my friend, sitting with his back against the tree and a cock 357 in his hand, decided it would be safe to leave the area. It was now around 1 o'clock in the morning. He started walking to where he left his mountain bike. To his dismay, he heard the animal paralleling him in the thick brush. The beast followed him to his bike. Not wanting to lose his sense of hearing, his only warning of the animal's position, he chose to push his bike back to the truck instead of riding it. It took him over four hours to push the bike back to his camp. When he thought the animal was too close, judging by the sounds it made in the underbrush, he would stop and wait. Every time he stopped, the animal would inevitably start to circle him again. When it sounded like its circuitous route took it a little farther away, my friend would start pushing his bicycle again, only to repeat the same routine every 10 minutes or so throughout the tortuous night. Finally, after a lifetime, he reached his vehicle, and in an adrenaline and panic-induced sprint, he threw his bike in the back, started the truck, and was headed down the mountain. It took several miles before the heavy sense of doom started to recede. As the adrenaline wore off, the shake started. He started shaking so bad that it was all he could do to keep his truck on the road until he pulled up to his house and into a kitchen chair. That is where I found him a while later, when I went over to his house to feed and water his dog. After he told me what had happened to him, I offered to go back with him and retrieve his camping gear and tree stand. He refused the offer and left his possessions to nature rather than return to the area. Even though he hunts and fishes as avidly as ever, he will never go back to that spot and avoids the entire region passionately. My cousin and I are heading home from Montana and heading through the Black Hills. I had picked out a spot to camp in the NF and planned on just setting up camp in the back of my truck and sleeping. So I just set a pin for what looked like a dead-end road to sleep on. So we pull up to the main road to get to the spot, probably two miles back, 43.7345108, minus 103.9461558, and we notice that there's a logging operation going on. So I pull off your side in case they are going to be working on a Saturday, and I shine my light around the perimeter and don't see anything. So we're setting up our bed, and my cousin hears this bang that sounded like someone smacking a stick on an excavator beam or whatever hard metal was out there, and so he looks at me and says, did you hear that? And immediately after, he said that we heard a second bang and decided to get the hell out of there, so we packed up and drove by the area where we heard the noise. So I pull up and open my window and shine my flashlight at the area, which is a hill, and see these two sets of eyes. The space between the eyes was probably 6 to 8 inches apart, and they were both clearly looking at my vehicle. One was about 6 feet off the ground, while the other was probably 4 feet taller. So I reverse because they're moving around, and I yell out the window, Hey, who's there? And I don't get a response. I ended up getting the duck out of there. I ended up concluding that it was probably standing on some sort of equipment, but I'm not sure what those eyes were. Last night, around 9 p.m., I stopped on the side of the road near a local field on my way home from a motorcycle ride. The moon was full, and I wanted to take in the view and stretch for a moment. There were many fireflies in the tree line, I am from the city and just moved to a more rural area, and it looked as if the forest was electrified. Out of nowhere, I hear this mechanical noise coming from inside the densely wooded area, almost like the sound of air being forced out of something. It was very unnatural and definitely sounded more machine-like than animal-like. Also accompanying it were the sounds of sticks breaking. I've never bolted so fast or been so afraid in the woods in my life. The sound was more of a whooshing type noise, the closest thing I could compare it to would be a pressure washer or the sound of air brakes on a big truck. 
except this was in the middle of a densely wooded area and in the middle of the night. I was definitely spooked for the rest of my ride home. I am a trucker, and my brother-in-law and I ride a team. We have a route we run frequently to York, Pennsylvania, on a road called the Susquehanna Trail. It was around midnight on a January morning. We had just delivered our trailer and were heading out. There is a dip on that road surrounded by houses with long driveways. When we got to that dip and our lights illuminated the bottom, we both saw a woman. She seemed elderly, dressed in a black dress, think Gothic Victorian, with a hat, and her face was covered by a veil or some kind of see-through fabric. We could see her face and her arms and hands. Her face was down, but her eyes were looking at us. Her body didn't move, but she did turn her face while we drove by. While I could believe it could have been someone with a mental illness, why would a woman stand on the side of a road in the middle of the night alone in complete darkness at below freezing temperatures? So we have this road that leads from our town to the highway and has a MCDS on it. So we have to go all the way out to the highway when the kids want McDonald's. One evening we had gone to get food and were coming back on the same two-lane highway, and it had just gotten to where you needed headlights on. We were about a mile down, and a truck was coming towards us. We slowed down because myself and my husband saw something, and it's weird to try and explain, but it was like the size of a wolf. But whatever it was reminded me of the thing off of the predator when he went invisible. We could see it, but it looked like the road and part of the grass. I had slowed down and was looking at it, trying to figure out what was going on, and it turned its head towards us because we could see the cloak thing shift. The truck coming towards us also saw it because it slowed down and the predator wolf thing shot across, and it looked nuts, just like when the predator moved in the movies, where you could see it but couldn't. I looked up and watched the driver of the truck watch it, and he kind of shot up in his seat, and both our heads shot to the side when it shot off. We all just sat there, we slowly pulled to each other, and I was hesitant to even roll my window down at that point, but I thought, well, it's got to go through his truck to get to us first, so the driver of the truck said, what the hell was that? Did you see it trying to hide what it really looks like by trying to blend in? That's when I knew it really did have a cloak looking thing going on. We agreed on everything and drove on. The whole time, I was watching mirrors and windows, waiting for them to attack since we had seen them. I made it home and would not go back out that way for a good year. We've talked about it around here before, and a few others have described the same thing before I even mentioned the predator cloak thing. What could it be? This is Native American land, and my dad's tribe is whose land it is, but I've asked a few elders, and they always say to not ask about things or they will hear you talking about them and pay you a visit. That's kind of like them saying not to whistle at night, eat in the dark, or leave your hair brush with hair in it, just the way we are raised, but I need to know what it was. In my early 30s, my cousin and I and some friends became amateur ghost hunters, cheap fun, but yeah, we did catch some things on camera that went into the area off something above the normal. But nothing is very definitive. Until one night, I'm driving home about 4.15 in the morning through a mountainous valley area outside of New Haven, Connecticut. It was a state route, and on one side the mountain had been blasted through for the road, making a rock wall, on the other side was a ravine with a cable guardrail. Sober and awake, close to home, I see movement coming from the rock wall, and a brush at the bottom of it starts to walk onto the road. Immediately I know it's got to be a deer, there are a lot of deer around our area, so I slow and I'm about to hit the horn, which always works to scare them off instead of catching them in the lights. Foot off the gas, car slowing down, I get very confused because it never resolves into being a deer or taking the shape of a deer, just a charcoal grey swirl. The outline of it was charcoal grey and looked like static from an old TV tube. Its center was black as ink, no shapes of arms or legs, no head, just an upright form. I wasn't afraid or felt any fear, I was just perplexed. The car is still slowing down, then eyes turned up and towards me, silvery white and long. The only distinction I can honestly say I saw was that they seemed to get wider, as if I caught it unawares, in the briefest moment, it slipped over the rail and was gone down into the ravine. I glanced that way, then I just put the pedal down and went home. What's the strangest part of it, I think, as spooky as it was. I should have been telling everybody about it, but that was almost 20 years ago now in another state from where I live now. But I told no one. Until a couple years ago and going on the internet hearing about Wendigos and Native American witches, all of a sudden the memory comes back and nothing about it for so long. One night, I was driving with my girlfriend on this lonely road. Now, I've driven through 8 mile road plenty of times before, but this time something felt odd. The temperature always seems to drop a good 10 degrees. I know it could be because of the orchards that run parallel to the road, and to make things worse, we were in my jeep with the top down. As I'm driving, 
my girlfriend is talking to me about a concert that we went to the month before. I couldn't really hear her well, so I decided to turn the music off. Soon enough, we reached the stop sign at 8 Mile and Alpine Road. At this point, it's dead silent, and next thing you know, we hear a loud cry coming from the orchards. I quickly think about the stories, and I floor it all the way down to West Lane. About 12 years ago, my family and I were going home for a vacation, and we had to drive through several countries to get there. We finally reached our home country, where the roads are very bad and there are barely any directional signs, it was the middle of the night. We are driving through this small village, and to our right, we see a church and a big black dog. We think nothing of it and keep driving forward for a while, thinking we left the village, and then see the same church and black dog on our right side. At that time, we thought it was strange that this town was as similar as the previous one, but we still kept driving for about 10 more minutes. And then we see the same church and black dog again. Keep in mind that we did not make any turns, we kept going in a straight line. We could literally only go forward since there were no bifurcations or anything. And we did this for a few hours because we simply couldn't get out of that town. Then we finally see another car on the street. A guy is going home from a party, and I ask him for directions. We follow the guy on the exact same road we took many times before, until we reach a crossroad that we have never seen before. And from that cross, we simply went straight, and the sun started to rise as if we finally got out of the night rather than the village. At that time, we really had no maps we could use or GPS. I am not even sure if the place we went through would even show up on any maps, given how much of a backwater town it was. To this day, we have no idea what happened. My family lives in the rural southern USA, and at night, it gets impossibly dark. Just you, the dark, and the trees. In November 2019, I was driving home around 10.30 pm after seeing some friends. Notably, I was the only person on the road. It was, as I've said, incredibly dark as I was driving through the woods, so I had my high beams on. Suddenly, a huge black shape ran in front of my car. I thought it was a bear, it was so large, or maybe a large, black mountain lion. I remember yelling and feeling my car rock from impact. I definitely hit that thing. But I didn't see it roll over the windscreen, and I didn't see it in my rear view as I came to a stop. It just vanished. Despite all my horror movie training, after a few minutes, I got out of the car with my flashlight and looked for the animal. There were no tracks to the woods, and there's no way I could have missed it running off, it was huge. But there was nothing on the road. There was nothing under my car, either, and my car was totally fine. No damage at all. I remember the hairs on my neck standing up, as I suddenly was overcome with the feeling of being watched and of not being alone. I jumped back into my car and floored it home, probably pushing 70 to 80 miles per hour. But until this day, I've never known what I encountered out there. So, I'm an OTR truck driver, which means that I drive across the country multiple times in a month-long period. On a dark July night around 2 a.m., I was headed south on the US 93 highway in Nevada. Approximately 30 miles north of Las Vegas. Traffic was scarce. I haven't seen a single vehicle for the last 40 minutes, at least. The only source of light that illuminated the road were the truck headlights. I was on the phone with a friend of mine, just chatting about random stuff, when, from a distance, about 300 feet ahead of me, I saw something on the shoulder of the road. At first, I thought it might have been a turned over construction sign or a bag of some sort. But as I was approaching the object, I started to make out some features. A human-like figure, I thought. Just to be clear, that area is deserted, and there's absolutely nothing to be found within a 25-mile radius. When I was about 5 yards away, I could see it clearly. It was a boy. 8 to 10 years old, I would say. With a school backpack and a white plush bunny in his right arm, held tightly against his chest. He was just standing there with his cold stare, completely unemotional. Looking me directly in the eyes. He hasn't broken a stare as I passed him. He hasn't even blinked or flinched. And let me remind you that it's an 80-pound semi-truck moving at 65 miles an hour. It's virtually impossible not to react to it driving past you about a yard away. My heart was racing. My whole body was covered in goosebumps. A cold chill went down my spine. I don't think I have ever been so disturbed in my life since I've never had any paranormal encounters. Once I passed him, the first thing that came to mind was that if I see him appear again a couple of miles ahead, I'm going to have a heart attack. But it never happened. The rest of the trip was uneventful. I still don't know what it was. I'm not trying to claim that it was a ghost or the spirit of a deceased child. I just can't find any adequate explanation for it. It was definitely not a hallucination since I was wide awake and talking on the phone. 
It just seems weird to me. What in the world was a 10 year old kid doing by himself in the middle of a desert? I was driving on the highway around 2 AM a few years ago, heading home. I noticed while driving past a U-turn gap in the road that something got picked up by my headlights, but I couldn't tell what it was. I look in my rear view, and I can barely tell the black car pulling out of it with all its lights killed, as it is almost impossible to see. He started following me, and I got pretty nervous about it. He kept his distance but kept on me for about 15 minutes while I kept speed and pretended like I hadn't noticed him in case he started to speed up. After that, he turned his lights on and ripped past me, way above the limit. It turned out that he was a ducking cop driving illegally without lights on just to try and bust me for something. Son of a witch. I was afraid I was going to get killed for my car that night. I was driving home with two friends. It was January, we're in Wisconsin. It was cold. Very cold. It was also almost 2 in the morning. Anyway, I was driving past a school that has a play area for the kids in the back. I couldn't see too much, but the swing set was visible. One of the swings was moving which caught my eye. There was a young girl swinging on this swing set at 2 AM, all alone. I doubt she was older than 13, and she was not dressed for January in Wisconsin. I slowed down to get a good look, she had to notice, but she just looked straight ahead. Naturally, my friends and I are wondering why this girl is out there by herself at 2 AM did we get out and ask? Nope. I don't need to anger a playground demon. I did call the police, however. I have no idea if they actually checked and saw anything. Sadly, this story is from my grandpa. He's a retired long distance truck driver, and he often drove throughout the night and early hours of the morning over unfamiliar roads. This one particular day, when my grandpa was in his 30s, it was between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m., and he was driving down a twisting country road that was so narrow that only one vehicle could fit at a time, so if two vehicles met from different directions, one would have to pull off the road to let the other pass. The road was empty, save for my grandpa. On the right side of the road, there was thick woodland, and on the left, open fields and a lake. There were no street lights. The only light came from my grandpa's truck and the moon. It was pretty lonely. My granddad was going steady down the road, going a bit faster than he should. When my grandpa said this, I always took it to mean he was blazing down the road as fast as the truck could go, listening to the radio and probably not paying much attention, when he suddenly felt hands on his shoulders and a voice whisper his name in his ear, so close that he felt the breath on his skin. He recognized the voice, it belonged to his mother, who had passed away a few years previously. Naturally, this spooked my grandpa, and he instinctively hit the brakes. Seconds later, his headlights lit up a pile of three crashed cars that took up the entire road. My grandpa stopped just short of the wreckage, but if he hadn't braked when he did, he would have plowed straight into the cars. The occupants of the crashed cars were all severely injured, and my grandpa was able to get emergency help. Had he joined the pileup, it probably would have meant a more dire outcome for all of them. There are a number of explanations for what my grandpa heard and felt, but my grandpa truly believes it was his mother giving him a warning. I live in southeastern Georgia, and occasionally while driving at night, I've seen these fairly tall, around 6 foot 2 with knees slightly bent, emaciated creatures with skin that looks like it was charred on the grill, leaving it covered in oil and black grit or flecks. I can't remember the face because the images of the rake look close enough to replace it in memory. It seems to mildly match the description of crawlers that I've seen on this sub, but I've only ever seen them bipedal. I've seen these creatures twice, and these sightings are the only times I've felt real fear. I've only seen them while driving and at night. The most notable time was the first one. While I was driving friends home with a full car, I found a corner to see what I've just described, standing in the road directly in front of my car. Understandably freaked out, I blinked my eyes as a reflex as I hit the brakes. When my eyes opened, we'd passed right through, and it was nowhere to be seen. I wasn't the only one to see it, and after a second of disbelief, the second we mentioned this thing out loud, I got an extreme feeling that we were being followed, doing 80, on winding back roads. I figured there wasn't much else to do as I had to get to a pair of siblings home in minutes as they had a strict curfew, and we were already late. As we reached about 4-5 ths of the way there, the feeling of danger went from behind me to in front of me, and sure enough, there was a limping munchkin cat or kitten, its legs were barely three inches long, walking down the street parallel to the yellow line, exactly where my front left tire would have been. I managed to swerve out of the way, as the cat just kept walking without change, and it was too dark to see if it moved after we passed. Before that night, I had never had a problem with any animal in front of my car while driving for almost a year without it happening, but since then, almost three years later, 
I have had animals almost commit suicide every week. And occasionally I feel the feeling again, usually when I drive the same roads, as if I'm being followed again. The second encounter was the scariest. I was again driving someone home in the same area as the other two. I didn't know him that well, but people knew where I was going. Halfway there, I could already feel that I was being followed, but I had gotten used to that. I had never been to those parts of the woods before, but as soon as I got close enough, just being in that area gave me the only time I had ever felt true fear for my life, as if just the consciousness of the woods outmatched a human one, it felt like a hive mind. After conveying this to my passenger, who confirmed that at night there have been scary occurrences, without elaborating much, I pull into his driveway, pulling up to his door as close as I can, as his house is in a very wooded yard and I didn't want him to walk too far. He made it inside, but as I was backing up to leave, as I felt the initial creature looking at me from behind me, I saw in front of me a second one bigger than the first one I saw running behind a stand-up shelter, basically a roof with no walls, and it was fast, even with my adrenaline pumping, it seemed to be going 25 to 30 miles per hour. Suddenly, the feeling of danger rose to the point where I felt I was in immediate danger. And there were more than those two. I tore through his dirt driveway back onto the dirt road entrance. As soon as I turned out of the driveway, a dog jumped from a completely brush-covered ledge five feet above the road. There was a house in the direction it came from, but it had a fence around it, and I don't think even a toddler could have fit through those vines, and this dog was three feet five inches. It didn't chase my car or anything, it stood in the center of the road and barked at my car. As I was already too close to it to stop, I had to swerve around it. As I passed it, it just stared without barking, but I didn't dare look at it for more than an instant. I don't think I came to a full stop the whole way home, which was a good 20 minutes away. In a discussion with a friend during the first encounter, we settled on calling it a skinwalker due to the connection with the kitten and the fact that the aggressive behavior only started once we spoke about it. Last summer, two friends of mine and myself decided to go on a road trip through the American Southwest. We'd been traveling for two days and were driving through southwestern Utah, heading from Zion National Park to St. George, where one of my friends, who will be called Spencer, grandparents lived and had offered to let us stay for the night. We had planned to arrive at around 8, but it ended up being probably 10.30 when we got to St. George. Anyway, we finally get off the highway in St. George when Spencer decides to tell my other friend Ian and me how his grandparents' house is right across the street from a graveyard. Okay, well, duck, that's spooky, especially when coming by after dark, but it's not like we have another free place to stay, so what are you going to do? Spencer starts giving us some background on his grandparents, and we turn into the neighborhood. So while following the directions of the GPS, I see a stop sign about 50 yards away. Next to the sign, I see three small human-like figures. At first, I'm like, what the duck are those kids? They're like seven years old, why are they out here at 10.30 p.m. on Tuesday without parents? Don't they have school tomorrow? We get closer, my two friends still just talking, not paying attention, and upon closer examination, the figures were not kids but poles to road signs. I relax. Then I start slowing down for the stop sign, and I look back at the poles, and I realize it was little kids after all. But there was something off. These kids were perfectly still, not looking at each other or talking for the entire 15 seconds or so that they'd been in my view, which, given, isn't entirely weird, but as we approached the stop sign, they stared into our car with the most demonic little faces I'd ever seen. None smiled, they all just looked super disappointed. I don't really know how to describe it, but the kids, who were definitely present and real, seemed somehow translucent, I guess, like they were ghosts. My friends stopped talking and noticed, which was weird. It's not like these children were particularly unique other than their odd presence at night, and I hadn't said or done anything to warrant a reaction, so they apparently were also getting the sense that something was up. The time it took to round that corner, staring these ghost children in the eyes, seemed like eternity. As I turned right, their gaze followed us the whole way, looking through us. I shouted, what the duck was that? And my friends were equally spooked and in hysterics. A couple seconds later, I look in the rearview window where they should have been, and they're gone. We make another right turn at the next opportunity, and there's the Mormon church and graveyard, just a block away, with Spencer's grandparents' house halfway between the spooky children's corner and the graveyard. Five years ago, I was driving to work bright and early in the morning, and the SUV next to me was in a right turn only lane, and I was in the straight lane while we were waiting for the light to change. I didn't think much of it or look at the SUV or driver until the light changed, and they also tried going straight. At that point, I looked over, as they were basically trying to run me off the road to go straight and veer into me. I was going to honk, but then the middle-aged lady that was driving jerked her head to the side, 
looked right at me, and her whole face morphed into a terrifying face. I don't even know how to describe it. It elongated and looked awful and terrifying. Like that scream painting by Edward Munch. But way more terrifying. It's like she decided to show me what she really is, and it changed in a flash. I slammed on my brakes, she, or it, cut in front of me, and I ended up taking the very next right turn just to get away from her, and I parked on the side of the road to catch my breath. I don't do drugs, I sometimes have a couple of beers after work, but nothing crazy. I've never seen anything like this before or after, and I've been too scared to mention it to anyone but my husband for fear of being called a crazy person. I saw her face change right before my eyes, and I am to this day absolutely certain of what I saw. The feeling that came over me was just absolute terror, and the look she gave me was certainly menacing. Okay, so a couple years ago, me and a friend were going to the spook light near Miami, Oklahoma. At the time, we were unaware of where the actual road was. Another friend of mine had shown me a dirt road in the area and claimed you would see it there. The actual road where it's seen, which I have actually seen there multiple times, was around 7 or 8 miles away. So still around the same area, sort of. Anyways. My first few times going out there, I always went to the dirt road and had several strange occurrences. One time I saw what looked kind of like the light you see on the other road for maybe about a half a minute. Other times, I would just get really heavy negative vibes. But the experience that stands out the most to me was one night when we were sitting in the car parked on the road and just talking. Then, all of a sudden, I felt extremely lightheaded and drowsy. The drowsiness intensified, and a few seconds later, without me saying anything about it, my friend asked if I felt drowsy and lightheaded because he was feeling it. Then, maybe 10 seconds later, we both, at the exact same time, noticed it looked like the road was actually stretching. Either that or our car was being pushed somehow. Which wouldn't make sense because the ground is pretty level out there. This very overwhelming feeling of get the duck out of here also hit, so we left as quickly as possible. For the following 20 minutes or so, we both felt aches and pains in our arms and still felt slightly drowsy. Okay, so this happened to me, 27, and my boyfriend, 24, about two years ago in the middle of the night. It was about 2 a.m. one night in September. We live about 25 minutes out of town in northern British Columbia, so our house is surrounded by the woods. Because it's such a dead road, usually we would pull out of the driveway and then turn on our lights. So I'm driving. I pull out to go left down the road and turn on the high beams. Then we see it. On the road is this weird, hairless, pale humanoid creature crouching in the middle of the road. It almost seemed to be glowing, but that was probably because it was such a pale white and I hadn't turned off my high beams. It whipped its head at us, as if it were surprised by our lights turning on. After a second, it shambles across the rest of the road in jerky movements and down into the ditch, which is about three feet deep. But that's not it. We both watched as it went down into the ditch and turned around to face us. And it stood up on its back legs, exactly like a human but not quite except it stood over 5 feet higher than the ditch, taller than our car at the time. And remember, the ditch is already 3 feet deep, so this creature was over 7 feet tall. It looked aggressive, hunched at the shoulders, and left forward slightly as if to look at the car. I swear I saw it with my own eyes. No. It was not watching us drive by. It wasn't looking at the car. It was looking through the window, and it was looking right at me. Whatever it was, it was intelligent and knew that the car wasn't moving itself it knew we were inside. I drove so slowly, turning my head and keeping eye contact with it as we drove past, and it did the same, craning its neck to watch me leave. My boyfriend couldn't see it pass me at that point. Eventually, it's out of my vision, and I look back at the road. We are both completely silent. I'm driving less than 10 kilometers an hour, having taken my foot off the gas when I saw something in the road. To this day, I don't really tell people because the people I tell just laugh it off or try to explain it as an albino starving bear or something. This year, his parents were visiting just before winter hit. They have a dog. Me and his mom were having a smoke on the deck, which is about 6 feet off the ground. It's dusk. There is not much light. We were on the left side of the deck, the same side we turn on the road to go to town. You can see the patch of wood where the creature would have been before, so this instance happened in the same little area. I hear a bunch of cracking twigs just as the dog goes nuts. He is a small boy, so we were surprised when he almost jumped off the deck to run in the woods. My boyfriend comes out just in time, and we see, just beyond some trees, a tall, lanky white form. But we couldn't see anything else definitive, and his mom has terrible eyesight and doesn't have glasses. I knew it was the same creature. I had this twisting feeling in my gut. 
We were leaving a wedding we had attended that was held about three hours from home. My boyfriend had stayed sober in order to drive us home, and I was pretty drunk. As we were driving the dark country back roads to get back to the city, I was half dozing and remember squinting because there seemed to be bright headlights washing over us, and then my boyfriend, who was driving, started screaming, like full-on screaming like I've never heard him do so before or since, it wasn't a loud, high-pitched screaming, but a deep in the throat screaming that broke in and out and that left him hoarse, and swerved our car sharply to the side of the road, nearly into a ditch. I came fully awake and was like, what? Are you okay? He said that he saw a truck coming full bore in the dark and honestly thought we were going to die. I looked behind us on a long straight road with no houses or streetlights, there was no sign of a truck or any kind of vehicle, no rear headlights on the road or any light from a truck's headlights, which we would have seen, no sound of a truck or car, or anything. But he was shaking, and I initially brushed it off as him maybe falling asleep at the wheel, which is already scary in and of itself. We were on a narrow country road, there was no way a massive truck could have gone by us without hitting our car, and I don't remember feeling the rumble and vibrating of our car, which was an old pos, that would have happened if a truck had narrowly missed us. So I dismissed it. He still swears that he saw a massive truck coming towards us. However, I do remember a flood of headlights hurting my half-closed eyes just before my boyfriend freaked out. My wife and I were traveling to the Smoky Mountains from Ohio on an anniversary getaway. We usually avoid highways in our travels and instead prefer the scenic and slower-paced state routes of my childhood. This trip stood out as quite a disaster, as we struggled with both the GPS and paper maps while navigating a route I was at least somewhat familiar with. For those not familiar with the area, being in central Kentucky, the forest is hilly and expansive, dotted with small towns and the occasional privately owned farm amidst all the federal land. We had eventually quieted down, anxiously following the GPS as it cut in and out. Our anxiety grew until the GPS suddenly chimed in with turn left now. I responded by reluctantly starting the turn when my wife suggested it must be a shortcut we were unaware of. Upon completing the turn, I slowed, seeing the road take a sudden drop in quality, potholes large enough to get a tire stuck in, overgrown scrub growth on the edges, and ominous, gnarled vines hanging down. The hair stood up on my neck, as it still does right now as I write it. Bringing the car to a stop, I asked my wife, are you sure about this? As I look towards her. No, we need to turn around, she starts to say, but is cut off, almost frozen, staring at her phone. Not in the way a person freezes when terror sends their muscles trembling, but completely motionless. I instinctively slammed it in reverse, backing into the position from which we came so that I could continue the course we were on. As we reached the end of our reverse turn, I slammed it into drive but went nowhere as the rear of the early 2000s Lincoln was lifted off the ground. Before I can process what is happening, something charged from the woods to our right. At first, it was a large red blob that moved with a speed and grace that seemed unnatural to its grotesque nature. As it closed the gap, it was clear that it was running on all fours, but only partly so, its forward movement was agile but uneven as it irregularly used its arms with its oddly bent hind legs. It was almost like its limbs were growing as it eventually came to stand on its hind legs and place its hands on the glass. Up close, I could see what I thought was fur, which seemed more like strands of rotten flesh that grew as thick as a shaggy dog and smelled overwhelmingly of rotten fish and moss. Its hands looked nearly human were it not for the rotten fur and long claws. The face sticks with me as much as the smell, being somewhat shaped like a human that has its face twisted and pulled forward in a vague canine shape with large pointed ears towards the top of its head. Inside its snarling mouth were long, narrow teeth that looked almost too large to close. But the eyes were the worst part, bloodshot and yellow, and they leered at my wife with hunger. The kind of hunger that promises unspeakable things. When you are in a flight or fight situation, you usually get that distinct moment of clarity where you make your choice, even if it's one you are ashamed of. In that moment, I felt like a small dog, defending my mate from a rabid wolf. I stomped the gas pedal and bellowed hard, go now and a series of loud noises that sounded more like bark than human noises. It jolted suddenly, and the rear of the car dropped, leading to a loud peal out. It kept pace with us, scratching at the car and banging on it until we broke 45 miles per hour, driving wildly through the winding country until we saw the lights of a town in the distance. We parked in a well-lit parking lot in the center of town, next to a gas station. We busied ourselves as we inspected the car, reluctantly sharing what we thought we saw. She was in tears and sobbing about feeling pressure in her head and being conscious but paralyzed. Looking under the trunk, I spotted a cracked strut and a lump of rotten flesh dangling from a frame member. 
The smell was still overpowering and sent us into a tear-filled hug as we stared at a piece of the filthy creature and realized it was likely at least two of them, the one in the window and the one that lifted the rear axle of the ground. Thoroughly shaken, we sat in the car facing opposite directions, discreetly unpacked our handguns, and hid them under our blankets. We waited until nine or so before setting back off towards our destination via highway. I live in Indiana, and I was driving home from Bloomington, where Indiana University is, last night with my friend. Usually my maps take me straight to the highway, but yesterday they randomly rerouted me to take an exit, which took us to a random country road. I have no clue why it rerouted us, as it was really out of the way. Anyway, these roads were dark, and there were no houses, like it was abandoned, and I was getting weird energy. It was then that my friend noticed a car was practically tailing us with its lights on. This obviously freaked us out, as we are two young women who automatically assumed the worst, and we both started panicking, and it was then that my car stopped working. The hand on gear shift kept spinning and jerking back and forth as the car started making extremely loud and disturbing noises and jerking around, and it wouldn't go more than 30 miles an hour. We were both overcome with this strange feeling of absolute horror and fear, and I have never felt like that in my life. I had my foot all the way down on the gas pedal, but my car was going so slowly, and it was in full panic mode. I just had such a strong gut feeling that something bad would happen if I pulled over, so I just kept going, and as soon as we made it out of the clearing and pulled over into a Taco Bell, my car started working like normal again, and the other car was gone. It was so strange and totally unnerved both of us, I was shaking for two hours after, and we were both consumed with this super weird feeling of fear, wanting to cry tight chests. Located in the Ottawa Valley, legend says that a ghost haunts Buck Hill Road. A never-ending, long dirt road that becomes even narrower as trees begin to feel like they're crowding around you more and more. A man, his wife, his daughter, and his dog lived out in the woods. One harsh winter night, the man told his wife and child to stay indoors as he went out to get some firewood. After returning home, his wife told him that their dog ran out of the house, and the girl ran out after him. Of course, the man went searching for his daughter but never found her. Every night, he would go out looking for her with only a lantern to light his way. Eventually, the man went mad and still never gave up looking for his daughter until his death. It is said that he still continues the search for his daughter. And at night, if you drive up that road to a certain point, turn your vehicle around so you're facing the way you came, flicker your headlights three times, and the youngest girl yells, Daddy! Three times and shut everything off so you're sitting in the dark, and they say you will see balls of light sway back and forth, making their way towards you. As if someone were walking while carrying a lantern. This happened a couple years ago to me, my mom, my younger brother, my sister, and her two friends. We all decided to go to Buckhill that night. However, there were only five seats in the vehicle and six of us, so my mom got in the driver's seat, my sister and her two friends in the back seat, and I got in the passenger seat with my little brother on my lap. Not the most comfortable or safest for the two of us, but oh well. Anyway, 45 minutes later, we arrive, seeing the small green lopsided sign in white capital letters, Buck Hill. What was once allowed, laughing, music-filled vehicle suddenly turned silent as my mom turned onto the road and carefully drove down the dirt road. Nothing but the black silhouettes of deformed trees seemed to grow closer as the road started to narrow. Nothing but the moon and my mom's headlights as a source of light upon arriving at the spot on the road, we stop and turn ourselves around, facing the way we came. I never knew a road could look so terrifying. So we got ourselves comfortable and ready, and I realized that I was the youngest girl, so I was the one who had to roll down the window and scream daddy. Three times. To the count of five, my mom flickered her headlights. I yelled the word daddy three times in my most innocent voice, and everything went dark as my mom shut the vehicle off. We waited, and all that could be heard was our breathing. My eyes dart around the area, constantly keeping a lookout. However, my mind seems to wander, thinking of the worst case scenarios imaginable. Then, at the same time, my brother and I jerked forward as we both saw a small, eerie green ball of light appear before us but then vanish. We told everyone what we saw. But then after that, nothing happens. So we tried again, mom flickered her lights. I yelled at daddy three times. Then shut everything off. And we waited, and waited, and waited. It was probably an hour later, and still nothing happened. So we decide to call it a night as we all begin to feel tired and bored. Right as my mom turned on the vehicle, she screamed like a ducking banshee and booked down the road at an ungodly speed. We were all screaming at her to tell us what happened, but she was hysterical and didn't say a word until we arrived at a small town where she pulled into the parking lot of a church and caught her breath. 
she held my hand and looked at my sister and friends, then at my brother, then at me, and said, I saw a silhouette of a child's hand come across my window. We all looked at one another in disbelief. Then I pulled out my phone and got out of the vehicle. Which everyone was freaking out about, but I told them I wanted to check for handprints. They thought that was a good idea and did the same. There was a handprint pressed against my mom's window. I continued to search the vehicle as my mind was filled with questions. Could it have been the little girl that never returned home? Is she angry that we were pretending to be her to lure out her grieving father? Then, coming to my side of the vehicle, I noticed something on my passenger seat door. Through the muck and dirt, crisp and clean, was a handprint. I asked my brother if he had put his hand on the door when he got out. He told me he didn't. So I asked him to come over to where I was and put his hand up against the handprint. This got everyone curious and gathered around. To our shock, the handprint on the door was much smaller than my brother's. It was indeed a child's handprint. Last night there was a storm that hit Alabama. It started raining really hard around 4 p.m. and started getting really bad around 5 and 6 p.m. There was also a tornado that hit Jefferson County, if I recall correctly. So before all that, at around 2.30 p.m., I went outside to feed the dogs when I got a text message from my sister. Hey, my battery died again. I'm at the water plant. My sister's car battery sucked, there's a water plant not far from here, so she pulled over. I got there, boosted her battery, and she went home. I wanted to go to the store and get some chips. Now my road is extremely backwoods. When you're on my road, it's like driving in a forest. I got some chips and headed back home, and by this time it's 3.15. It's starting to get cloudy, dark, and rainy. At 3.30, I was finally almost home, just going through all these crazy turns. It's pretty common to see a deer or two pop up, so I was driving around 25 miles per hour around this curve. When I saw this thing, it moved or ran like a monkey. Was naked like a person, with blue, pale skin, long limbs, a short body, and a small skull, not too small, just small enough, it didn't look like it belonged. If we're to stand, I would believe it to be about 6 feet tall, maybe a little shorter. I slammed on my brakes, but by the time I came to a stop, it had already run into the woods. It didn't look at me, it just ran. I got home and told my sister that she thinks I'm pulling a joke on her. I'm just like WTF last night, and today I'm still not sure what the hell I saw. I like to hunt, I have guns, but I'm not brave enough to find out what they are. This was in North Alabama, and I don't know if I'll ever see it again. So I was driving home two days ago at roughly 3 a.m. I was driving on a British A road, which is in the middle of nowhere and surrounded by forest. Now I pretty much know this road like the back of my hand, as I've been driving back and forth, mostly at night, for a long time. There are street lights, but they're quite dim and don't do a great job of lighting up the road ahead. As a bit of background, I'm generally a calm driver. I don't know why, as I'm quite frantic in real life, but when I'm behind the wheel, nothing seems to phase me at all. But the other night, I'm pretty sure I nearly had a heart attack. So I was driving along the road as per usual on my way back home. The only way to describe this is to say that about 150 yards ahead of my car, out of the woods, this humanoid creature bolted into the road. It was a light gray color and hunched over on all fours but could easily be about 8 ninths feet tall and stood upright. This thing bolted into the road at an unnatural speed and disappeared into the woods on the other side of the road. Now there's four lanes and no central reservation, so it was a straight sprint across. I tried to rationalize this as a bird, but I just knew for a fact that it wasn't. Like I said before, I'm a very calm driver, but as soon as I saw this thing, I instantly turned freezing cold and started sweating, almost on the verge of crying. I don't know what my rationalization was, but some part of me wanted to slam on my brakes out of panic to take a breath, but I just put my foot down and drove way too fast to get away from what I just saw.